So um, you can tell people who have missed the call that they will be able to get the recording uh, on the Woodstock EDC website. And I believe the Okemo Valley TV station is also uh, recording, maybe recording the call or maybe posting it on their site as well. Um, we have a terrific agenda and a group of speakers tonight, so let's just get right into it. I'm going to briefly summarize the agenda, um, and then I'll just uh, go through and we'll get started. As in the past, we will have time, some time for Q&A, um, and I encourage our speakers to share as much information as you can, but be concise. <laughs> uh, we're going to stop three times for Q&A. Uh, let me go through the agenda and I'll tell you. First, we're going to start, the theme tonight are financial resources and advice on how to get those financial resources uh, for small, for local businesses. Um, the, we're going to start with banks, and we've got representatives from the three most local banks that serve Woodstock, uh, Bill Dunn from Mascoma, Jody Cole from Peoples, and Steve Gurren from Bar Harbor. And they're each going to talk in that order uh, roughly about their programs um, and, uh, and accompanying them and all the other speakers. If you go to the Economic Development Commission website, you can follow along both the agenda but also contact information for all the speakers and some other information that they've posted, like for the banks, this is their website and here's how, who to call if you want to apply for a loan or get information and so forth. So that site is Woodstock-Vermont, spelled out, Woodstock-Vermont.com. And right at the top of the site, the first link will take you to the March 26th call. And it'll show you pretty much everything that I'm talking about. So we'll start with the commercial bankers. And then after the three of them speak, we'll have time for questions for the commercial bankers. Then we'll turn more to the uh, government programs that are available. Darcy Carter, who's the head of the Small Business Administration in Vermont, will speak about the new programs. <laughs> Darcy's got her hands full because the programs are arriving hour by hour, I think. Um, Charlie Kimball, who's the Woodstock uh, representative in the legislature, will talk about the VIDA emergency lending program. And Denise Duquette, who's an advisor with SCORE, will talk about the assistance that SCORE can provide you in making these kinds of applications, whether it's to commercial banks or to the government programs. And then after that kind of government program section, we'll have a second Q&A session. Uh, and then finally, we'll finish up with some other updates. Um, Allison and Charlie, uh, Allison Clarkson, who's the senator uh, in the state senate, and Charlie will give us a legislative update on the basic programs that are being passed by the state, and, and maybe they can advise on federal as well. We'll have a quick update from Beth Finlayson, who's the Woodstock Chamber of Commerce head, and I'll finish up with just a very brief update from the Economic Development Commission. So uh, I just want to also point out that we have four chambers that are sponsoring this meeting tonight. The Woodstock Chamber, uh, Caitlin Christiana, who's the head of the Springfield Regional Chamber, Carol Lighthall, who's head of the Okemo Valley Regional Chamber, and PJ Skahan, who's the head of the Hartford Chamber. And thank you for participating and for inviting your members as well. Okay, I think that's it. Um, any uh, is there anything that, um, that the speakers think that I've forgotten before we get started? Going once? No. Okay. So um, let's start with commercial bank uh, lending programs, and I'll start with um, Bill Dunn from Mascoma. Go ahead, Bill. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, just a quick introduction. Bill Dunn. I'm a Senior Vice President, Commercial Loan Officer with Mascoma Bank. I had a team of four other commercial loan officers that operate on both sides of the Connecticut River, both in Vermont and New Hampshire. Uh, John mentioned a couple links. I'm just going to tell you what they are that will be posted on his, on his website there. The first, very simply, mascomabank.com. That's the uh, main website of the bank. The second one, I won't give you the URL, but it will take you directly to the Woodstock office where you can connect with Susan Bryan, who's the branch manager there. And finally, the third link that will be posted is an appointment scheduling assistant, so you could you could click on that and then get an appointment with the banker in the Woodstock office. Uh, before I get into the loan programs, I want to tell you just a little bit about the changes and how we're delivering service at the moment. After Governor Scott's stay in place order, we had to get creative. Our uh, branch tellers and, and customer service reps are, are walking around with documentation from the Department of the Treasury that says bankers are essential personnel and it allows them to get into work. 
in order to protect against uh, COVID transmission, we are operating primarily through the drive-up windows. It's amazing what you can do through a drive-up window. Uh, what we cannot do anymore is hand out lollipop stickers or dog bones, so uh, we ask for your patience during these trying times. Uh, the ATMs are available. We're offering online conferencing. Uh, there are ways of setting up appointments to get into the bank if you need to access a safe deposit box. So those, those are uh, resources or venues or avenues that you can travel to uh, get access to your traditional banking. Uh, before jumping into the commercial products, I did want to let you know that Mascoma Bank has, uh, as of yesterday, suspended all late charge assessments on residential loans, mortgage loans, and consumer loans for the next four months. I think it's a showing of the fact that uh, local banks are trying to understand the various pressures that, that folks, uh, not only commercial businesses, but um, uh, in the greater community will be feeling. So we just basically suspended payments, shut off that switch. Uh, the immediate response that we put into place was to have multiple conversations with our uh, loan portfolio customers and see if they needed immediate relief. We have instituted a policy to go interest only on commercial loans for the next 90 days. We understand that some businesses uh, might be impacted to the degree that they're not even able to make interest payments. In those situations, we will do complete forbearance and suspend payments for a 90-day period. Uh, this is the initial reaction to let's buy these folks some time. We don't know what it's going to look like. So I think it's entirely possible that within 90 days we're going to have to continue those conversations and kick the can down the road for a little bit more, and we're prepared to do that. Uh, we are continuing our traditional commercial lending. We're having uh, conversations with our customers. We're increasing lines of credit. We're helping our nonprofit partners stay in business while their revenue sources have uh, basically stopped. Uh, and we're having conversations, and what I would do is encourage each business owner to call their local banker and, and continue conversations about other items that you will hear tonight. Uh, I know the, the SBA is going to chat, and I've been, I've been reading up on some of the programs that they're going to be offering, and it's, it, it is changing by the hour. and hasn't been voted on yet, so we'll see how, how that unfolds. Uh, call, call your banker. Ask for assistance. We, there's a tremendous amount of flexibility. I started by saying we had 90-day uh, agreements. Um, 90-day agreements. What that's doing right now is we've got about 155 of those in process. So the, uh, that's demonstrating the fact that there is a real need for payment relief. Just when we try to figure out what the next steps are. And I'll pass it on from there. Okay, Bill, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, next is Jody Cole from Peoples. Jody, go ahead. Thanks a lot, John. Um, thanks for that intro. Bill, uh, the banks are are all dealing with COVID uh, under the same rules and and um, delivery of services. So, uh, his description of how customers can access um, our branches is the same. We're all operating under the same rules right now for accessing the branch. Um, from a commercial perspective, from a small um, business banking perspective, I wanted to talk a little bit about. Um, it's a very unusual time. We do have a very high volume of need from our existing customers right now, and that's been our priority, just like uh, at Mascoma. We're um, making very similar um, decisions with our customers as to how to move forward. As you guys know, some businesses have um, been forced to shut down, some before others. Uh, many are not given the um, status to continue to operate at this time. So. Um, that 90-day principal and interest moratorium is the approach that we're taking with our customers as well, primarily, among other solutions after we discuss with them what their needs are. Um, so I don't know how many of you on the phone might be customers of Peoples, but I recommend as well that you reach out to your um, the banker that you have a relationship with and, and talk through your current situation so that we can um, best match solutions to what it is you're experiencing right now. Um, in terms of new business, we are um, definitely continuing to look at new requests. Our, our existing customers remain a priority in making sure that we're giving them all the tools they need to get through this current situation. 
Um, but we are, um, you know, uh, like all financial institutions, open to talking to new clients as well. So just a little bit of background on what that looks like and feels like at People's. Um, if you, when you go to the Woodstock Vermont um, dot com page, you're going to see uh, three people that you could contact if you wanted to talk um, further about co a commercial banking relationship. Uh, many of the local businesses probably would talk to Alice Baird, who um, sits in our White River Junction office but covers this greater territory. She's a business banker for us. Um, my role is a, a regional manager of commercial banking for Burlington down through the southern part of the state. Uh, my team is middle market, so we're dealing with um, loan relationships a little bit bigger. Alice is dealing with loan relationships up to about $1.5 million. So her contact information is there, the territory she covers. If you're in a territory that's not listed in that space, you just reach out to Alice and she'll get you in touch with the most appropriate person um, to talk with you um, about your uh, business situation. Um, we don't have, there is an application process, but we don't, we don't generally just go right to the application. It's really um, an opportunity to have conversations about what your needs are so that we can help and guide our customers through the process of collecting the right information to see what we can do for you. Um, so I think patience is the word that we're all learning to live with right now. Um, there's so many unknowns, and, and I agree completely with Bill. This um, the the uh, outlook, the landscape, it's changing multiple times a day for us. Um, we're uh, I'm excited to hear what Darcy has to say because I think we're all getting up to speed on the direct loan program that she's going to talk about, the emergency loan program. But uh, just coming out today, uh, there's a lot of other um, supports that are going to be made available to small businesses. So. Um, and I think your local banks are going to be very involved in helping deliver those um, accommodations or loans um, to the businesses. So it will be important for um, all of you to, to listen and um, stay abreast of those changes because if the current program being described isn't what you're looking for, there's a lot more coming. So um, I think with that I'll stop and, and pass it off to Stephen. Uh, John, it, th this is Alice, and just before we move on, I'd just like to remind everybody there are four chambers that cover all of Ver uh, Windsor County. So uh, it, it's, we're not just Woodstock specific here. It's, it, we have a big territory with four chambers. Yeah, and I apologize. I uh, posted on the is some of the Woodstock EDC website, which is Woodstock-Vermont, spelled out, Woodstock-Vermont.com. Some of the information on that page is focused a little bit more narrowly on Woodstock. So um, Bill, well, if any of the speakers, but I think in particular Bill, Jody, and Steve, if you would like to send additional information to me that covers other geographic areas, I think most of you may have covered it. But if you haven't, please feel free to email it to me, and I'll get it up on the site by tomorrow morning. So thank you, uh, Alice. I think, I think our contacts are broad enough for that. Thank yeah. you so much. Great. Okay. Um, all right, Steve Gorin from Bar Harbor. Steve, go ahead. Uh oh, Steve, are you there? You might need to unmute yourself at your end. Oh no, Steve, we still can't hear you. Uh oh, he's on. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, um, I think what we'll do, uh, Steve, if you do come back on, you'll be unmuted, uh, or if you figure out how to unmute yourself. Um, uh, shoot. Uh, then then uh, we'll let you jump back in. Um, but let me pause to take uh, at least questions then for, um, for Bill and for Jody. Uh, but before, before, and so I'm going to open it up for questions for Q&A, and I'll explain in a minute how to how to raise your hand. Um, all right, we're now in the Q&A session. If you'd like to raise your hand, you can hit star six on your phone, and uh, if you hit star six, it will ask you 
you probably have to enter one. It'll say, do you want to be added to the queue? And you say one, and you'll be added to the queue. Um, and so star six, and then when it asks you to confirm, you hit one, and you'll be added to the queue, and I'll call on you. Make sure your phone is unmuted, because you're all muted right now, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, you are, because it's very quiet. Um, I do have one question, though, that was submitted, uh, bef bef well, I have a couple questions that were submitted beforehand that maybe Bill or Jody could, could jump in on while we're waiting if there are any questions. Um, we, at the last call, and, and Jody, you sort of alluded to this a little bit, but at the last call we were advised by some folks about not sort of rushing in, that there are instances where people apply for loan A and they find out that it makes them ineligible for loans B and C that turn out to be much more attractive. Uh, do you have examples of that? What advice would you give people as, you know, they're going to hear a whole list of programs tonight. How would you advise that the folks who are on the phone navigate and think about moving fast versus moving slow? And, you know, I suppose it depends on their individual circumstances. But uh, maybe Bill or Jody, do either of you have a comment about that? Sure. John, um, what I would say is start the conversation with the bank so they understand that there's a need. A, a lot of times uh, borrowers will think that it's emergency money and they must pull it right now. Take, take the time to understand uh, the ramifications of doing that. If you're borrowing money and your business has a likelihood of not succeeding through this, then you're only going further in debt. So uh, have the conversations and, and figure out the best position. As far as other programs, we had some – guidance that the first SBA program that came out uh, will not um, preclude you from using those proceeds if you borrow in the interim. So if you were to take a bank loan to bridge until you're getting an SBA loan, that's a, an appropriate use of, of those funds. But as these programs roll out, read them well, chat with other business resources, and figure out if it's, if it's the right move for you. Yeah. Okay, great. Jody, do you want to add anything? No, I think that covers it. You know, in a normal banking environment, most of your commercial bankers are going to be very well versed in the different programs and opportunities that are available. It's a little bit unusual circumstance because I think we're all gaining new information every day. So, um, you know, I I agree completely. It's it's make sure your banker understands exactly what your needs are, and um, and we will try to help navigate through what's available for you. Okay. All right. That's great. Thank you. Um, just checking one last time with Steve Gurren. Um, Steve, if you can hear us, we, let me see if he's still on. I think Steve has actually dropped off. Um, so he must be having some problems. So Steve, well, he can't hear me. But <laughs> if you can hear me, Steve, um, if, uh, if you manage to dial back in as a host, um, we'll pop you in again later if you have other comments to add. Um, are there any, there are, don't seem to be any questions for our commercial bankers. Any, uh, any star six, if you want to ask a question, um, I'll just wait one more minute and then we'll get to the government programs. Um, and there's a lot of stuff being written also in the newspaper every day. So, uh, all right, we have a question from 802-356-6748. So, um, please make sure your phone is unmuted, and I'm about to unmute you now. Okay, go ahead. And can you say... Hi who there. You? Yeah. <laughs> Hi there, John. This is Laura Spittle out in South Woodstock. I have Vermont Horse Country. And uh, <clears throat> we are extremely dependent on our next-door neighbor, the Green Mountain Horse Association, for our market. And uh, obviously... Um, there have been problems in the industry that, uh, well, let's just put it this way. The governing body of competition has suspended all, competi all recognized competition for at least another month. So at a time of year when we should be getting going for the season, we are stuck in mud, literally and figuratively. So my question is this. Um, the the uh, availability of funds, in, for small business loans, um, will they be based on our normal um, income during this time of year, or you know, will they will they be looking to see what we normally might have coming in this time of year, or will they be looking at it as, uh, oh well, you know, she's not going to have any income very possibly, so forget it. 
Bill or Jody, do you want to take that? I think Bill may have, I mean, uh, Steve may have logged back on. We'll get to you in a minute, Steve. Bill or Jody, either one of you want to try to respond to that? Jody, do you have anything to add? Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's a little different, difficult, Laura, to speak specifically to that without having an sure. opportunity to sit down and really talk through your financial situation and, and what your um, the historic operations have looked like. Um, and I think I think it's, you know, I guess I suggest that talking to your banker might uncover a tool that, it, you know, maybe isn't a traditional small business loan or so, is something else that maybe is a bridge to get you. I mean, I think part of what Bill had said, and I know we're feeling it as well the same way, this kind of 90-day decision to, to just try to settle things is that all of us are kind of wondering what what's next, how long this is going to go on, and things like that. So it does, you know, to Bill's point earlier, indebting yourself um, until there's a little more transparency is a, is a tricky thing, and you have to think through that. So what are the best tools out there that might bridge that timeline for you that aren't going to set you back if it's much longer than you think it's going to be? So um, I, I think a conversation with one of your local bankers or uh, is going to help you uncover what might be a realistic solution. Sure. I, I know you know, I think all of that goes pretty much without saying. Uh, I certainly uh, understand all of that. I think what I was trying to get at is what are going to be the criteria that you got to looking at when you're looking at bridge loans. Let's say a company needs five thousand dollars in a bridge loan until they. Uh, get you know organized in the next 30 days. Are they, is that criteria going to be based on the actual possibility of income in the next 90 days, or is that going to be based on you know 35 years of experience? Yeah, I don't sure. think so, we could. I don't think we could base it on the next 90 days because you're you know likely to have some interruption to your income. So I think we would all have to be assessing the historic ability of the right, business right. to to come through that for sure. Does that answer Thank your you question? Just, yep, that if does. Thank you so on to that, If I could just oh. tag on to that as well. So you just throw out a dollar amount that is relatively nominal, right? It's, it's $5,000 right. is the, the amount of money that it's going to take a business to make decisions in the next 30 days as to whether or not they're going to continue on or what have you. Uh, credit score is a good indication of the character of the borrower, right? So we've got a program that if you have a, a decent credit score, and we can set you up with a line of credit for $25,000 as long as your business has been in place for two years. Now, that particular program is almost like a giant credit card, right? Your, your, past, your past history as, as an individual is what's driving that. So for smaller dollar amounts, there are different avenues. If you were talking about a complete refinance of a, of a property in these uncertain times, that's going to that's gonna be a slower rollout. Okay, that's... That's a very good answer also. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, guys. Are there any other questions? Um, star six uh, for um, for any questions, and then you'll have to hit a one. But I don't see any. So let me just check uh, briefly. Steve Gurren, did you come back on? I, I did. I'm now on my cell phone, so I don't know okay. if you can hear me. Over. We can. Um, one, it, I, uh, I don't know if you could hear what was going on, but if you want to just take a few minutes and um, – uh, and talk about Bar Harbor and uh, and what you're sort of you know what you, what people what you think local businesses should know about Bar Harbor right now. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to be here and talk to you. Um, Bill and Jody really hit the high points as to how we're doing business. Uh, we're all we're all kind of in the same boat. So I was going to take this in a slightly different direction if I could, um, just to talk about. Um, Community bankers in general, um, we we are we tend to be generals generalists, uh, and we really uh, do care about and focus on the small businesses and the communities uh, where we you know we all work and and play and live, uh, and those are our primary focuses. It's really challenging when we have a disruption like we've got right now, and um, Bar Harbor Bank and Trust is taking the same type of view that uh, the prior two speakers took. Uh, we're looking on a case-by-case -case basis at our clients, seeing what their needs are, and, and also looking at uh, payment deferrals. 
Um, we we have taken the position that in uh, in certain circumstances we will go out as long as 180 days uh, for payment deferrals. Uh, we we do believe that this is going to be more than a, a couple of month blip in our economy. When you shut down the entire economy for a period of time, um, it does it does not just snap back. It's going to take a while to recover from this. Uh, we're seeing clients come into the office in all sorts of stages of, of disbelief and uh, frustration and, um, you know, name it. So I, I, I was talking with my, one of my clients this, uh, this morning, and we were talking about, you know, the five steps of dealing with a crisis. And I always remind myself of the acronym SARA, S-A-R-A-H. It stands for Shock, Anger, Resentment, Acceptance, and Healing. And um, I think we're probably all still in the shock phase, and we all react to that a, a, a little bit differently. Um, so my comment to my team has, has been just you know, stay calm, work, work with your clients, talk to them about, you know, how long can you stretch your existing cash, uh, cash balances, what lines of credit do you have, what's your weekly um, – how much, how much do you spend on a weekly basis, and how long can you, can you survive this uh, with your business scaled back or shut down completely? Sometimes it's, you know, we actually have a, a few weeks to, I'm not going to make payroll on Friday, and we, we adjust our response accordingly. Um, as far as lending, um, you know, we all, we all have the same philosophy. We're focusing on our existing clients and doing everything we can to help our, our clients and our communities work through this period. Uh, we are still open for business, uh, looking at uh, new opportunities for existing clients and new ones as well. Uh, I will point out that all bankers are trained in a very uh, basic core set of principles that we call the five C's of credit. Uh, the first C is cash flow, and uh, that's pretty much what we're going back to. We're, we're falling back on the basics, so cash flow is critical. And, and we understand that businesses don't necessarily have uh, cash flow right now. We have to look at historical cash flow, um, but cash is king. Uh, and if you go to the website Woodstock-Vermont-Com and scroll down to the little uh, spot where we've got Bar Harbor Bank and Trust, I've, I've got a link there to our website. It's called the Five C's of Credit. I actually was asked to do a, a quick video presentation on how banks look at loans. So the Five C's of Credit are up there. Um, and in, in closing, I'll just, I'll just say, look, um, please stay calm. The banking system is going to be here for you. This isn't the first recession we've seen. Uh, I've been a banker for 33 years. This is my fourth. I've seen a couple of deep ones. We always recover. Manage your cash wisely and talk to your bankers. Um, like everybody else has said, we are great uh, resources. We've connected with a lot of people. All of the resources you're going to hear from tonight, plus some non nonprofit lenders called CDFIs. Um, there are there are resources out there. They're coming daily. Uh, in fact, the best option for you uh, may not have even been developed yet. So, with that, I'll I'll end. All right, fantastic. I'm glad we uh, were able to loop you in. Um, I'm going to, seeing no additional questions, I'm going to move on now to the second section, which is the um, SBA, oh, the, sorry, the government program section. Um, and at the end of that, we'll have uh, a chance to answer, uh, ask questions again. We'll start this with Darcy Carter, who's the Vermont, re I'm not sure, the head of the SBA for Vermont. Um, and she has a ton of stuff happening. Uh, so, Darcy, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Oh, thanks, John, and um, good evening to everybody. And um, it is definitely a very um, different time for everybody here. Uh, SBA has, um, you know, a long history doing disaster lending, and so the first thing that became available um, with the COVID-19 was our very standard um, program called the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, or EIDL, or EIDL loan, and so. Um, just keep in mind, that's that's one thing, but there's other things that are changing going on at the same time. So this is our standard one, and this goes up to $2 million. This is for small businesses, small agricultural cooperatives, um, businesses engaged in aquaculture, which I don't know if we have anybody in Vermont doing that right now, um, and private nonprofits. 
So you can get up to $2 million um, for small businesses. Um, it's 3.75% fixed, 2.75% um, for the nonprofits. Um, loans that are over 25000 they do look for collateral under this standard program. They're looking for an ability to repay, which is based on your previous year at a similar time. So they're really doing a look back, and they're trying to determine what was your gross profit and basically try to give you half of that in terms of uh, operating capital to cover those expenses you would have been able to cover um, except for this disaster. So it's really trying to stretch your payment out up to 30 years to keep it low um, the quirky thing is SBA actually determines the loan amount. So you can't say, oh, I want, you know, $50,000 or $20,000 or $200,000. They will make that determination based on the information they, that they get. Um, and this is a loan that you apply directly um, to SBA. It's a direct loan from SBA. There's no bank involved in this case. It's the taxpayer's bank, right? Um, and so... The disaster loan website, um, there's a couple ways to get it, sba.gov forward slash disaster, or you can do disasterloan.sba.gov. Either way, the website has been inundated, and you've probably heard that and have probably tried and grumbled, you know, just when you need us, why is this happening? So there have been some very large maintenance things going on. Um, to move things up to the cloud and expand capacity to contract out with outside um, parties as well. And so there is a current workaround where you would basically download the form, fill it out. It's a fillable form. They're going to ask you to upload, save it, and upload two forms to the website. You can also print them off and mail them in. So it's kind of old school, but it will still work um, until the website is um, functioning for an online application. And if you can appreciate, normally when we have disasters around the country, maybe there's five or six. Now we have every state declared plus every U.S. territory. So we've gotten 60,000 applications already. Uh, so the system did get um, kind of uh, backed up on that. So they're working on it is all I can tell you now, and I know it's really frustrating. And um, please feel free to email me, Darcy, D-A-R-C-Y dot Carter at S-B-A dot gov about anything, even if you want to just yell at us. <laughs> We've gotten some of those, so it's fine. We understand the stress you're under, trying to figure out about your employees, what you should be doing, and all of that. So, you know, this program has always been meant to just do that that thing. So, But what's happening now, because of the widespread, you know, pandemic and the, its effect on every single kind of business, as um, the Congress has, you know, passed through the Senate a new bill called the Payroll Protection Plan under the CARES Act. And um, that's trying to just say, look, we can't get all the money out from SBA, you know. That's just not going to be doable with the need that's out there. Let's leverage the amazing banking services that we have in this country to do the same thing. So it's kind of co-opting our regular program that the banks are excellent at delivering and saying, hey, can you can you do a disaster loan too? And oh, by the way, we're going to waive all these things we normally require, things as, you know, collateral, personal guarantees, um, things like that. So then everyone's like, well, if I'm applying for this EIDL loan, how come I would have to guarantee that? But if I get this other loan, I don't. So they're going to do that crosswalk, and they're going to probably go back to that standard EID loan and change some of those uh, rules about guarantees and collateral and things like that. But this is a little bit fluid right now. So what I would encourage you to do, you can apply for the EIDL. It doesn't bar you from the other program because it's going to take probably three weeks for your loan to be processed then if you haven't closed on it and it hasn't been dispersed, you can cancel it. There's no fee to apply, and it's just an option. And some of these other, you know, relaxation of rules could flow to it and prob probably will because otherwise you've got competing programs that don't make sense. I know it's confusing out there. That's the program that's available right now. The one that the Senate passed, has to go to the House, it could get modified. Um, it was unanimous, so maybe it won't be modified substantially, but we don't know. And once it's passed, 
there's going to be some time for it to be implemented, at least a couple of weeks. So if you're thinking time-wise where you are, um, this, those are the things to keep in mind. So we have to have, you know, the implementing guidance that we're giving to the banks. The banks have to, you know, kind of, uh, you know, absorb it all and turn around and, and see where this makes the most sense in terms of underwriting it. But under the new proposed one that passed the Senate, some good things in it, if they survive, is that if you are bringing your employees back and paying about eight weeks of payroll expenses, then the loan that you're given to do that would be forgiven for that amount that's associated with payroll expenses. And that includes quite a lot of other things like vacation time and sick leave and medical leave, all kinds of things like that. So that's kind of attractive. So I, I think it's good to take a look at it, even if you know, maybe you don't have a bank relationship in terms of lending yet. I still think once this is finalized, you know, talk with your bank, see what, you know, is available, and is this a better way for you to go. There is some language that the EID loan could be refinanced by this new um, PPP loan, as we're calling it, Payroll Protection Plan. I don't know the details, so I can't tell you affirmatively that's going to happen. Um, but it certainly looks like it could be very promising for some businesses to go that route. The other thing that is mentioned, there have been, um, you know, a fair amount of declines in the EIDL loan program. And so the agency is also looking with this new legislation coming out of Congress on how to, it's, it's, they're calling it a grant, but we don't know how it would actually work yet. But it, it may be that if your loan is declined, you could get this $10,000 advance, and maybe it becomes a grant. So stay tuned on that. I really wish I could tell you absolutely what is out there in terms of these programs, but you're taking an old program and trying to dust it off and maybe tweak it, and then you're having a brand new program, very, very different from our typical SBA loan program that we do with banks. Um, it has a wider size standard. So restaurants were normally to be a small restaurant full service at $8 million. Well, some people own, you know, five restaurants and they are over $8 million and they couldn't get an SBA disaster loan. They've lifted that. You can have 500 employees now as a full service restaurant. So they're trying just across the country to take a look at industries that have been impacted and those that may not have been eligible before will be. So it includes sole proprietors and independent contractors, self-employed people, and like I said, some of these larger small businesses. So I don't know if I've confused everybody or not, but um, I would just encourage you to contact us and tell us where you're at and what you're looking for, um, working with your banks, and also you know taking advantage of some of the free business advising that's available with SCORE, Small Business Development Center, our Women's Business Center, it's good sometimes to just talk with a neutral party that's not a relative <laughs> and give you the candid feedback on whether a loan is a good idea for you or not and all the other things that and you know your business is looking at to determine. So I think I'll leave it at that, John, um, in case there's some questions later. Okay, yeah, we're going to take questions in a couple of minutes. Thank you very much. We're um, we're going to talk uh, we're going to talk about SCORE. Denise Duquette is is available. Is, is going to talk in a few minutes about how they can help you to navigate everything you've heard so far. But we're going to layer on one more uh, potential program. Uh, so Charlie Kimball, you are going to talk a little bit about VITA, and maybe you can start. At least I don't know what VITA stands for. <laughs> and take sure. Uh, thanks, John. Can you hear me? Okay. We can, yeah. Okay, uh, great. Thank you. And um, VITA is the Vermont Economic Development Authority. It is the instrumentality of the state, and it provides loans to a variety of industries across the state. Um, so it is a, a lender that is supported in part by some subsidies from, uh, from the legislature and from the government. But uh, just to give some context, uh, VITA... In 2011, uh, Hurricane or Tropical Storm Irene was on August 28th. And on August 30th of the same year, two days later, they introduced a, an emergency loan program to help people recover from, uh, from the tropical storm. 
that was incredibly fast. And I have to say that Vita this year has also come up with a mirror program um, that is patterned after that, but it is not yet available because they really need an appropriation from the state, and that requires the legislature to appropriate approximately $800,000 for this new round of $10 million in financing. So the, I'll describe the program and then tell you when it may be available. So it's uh, it's $10 million, but the loans are uh, up to $100,000, and 1% interest only for 12 months, and that would be converting to an amortizing loan. Uh, eligible borrowers would include any commercial, agricultural, and non -for nonprofit organizations that cannot meet obligations due to loss of business as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. So VITA will waive its customary commitment fee, uh, and the borrower is to reimburse VITA for out-of-pocket expenses like filing fees in case they have to uh, secure it by collateral. Um, it's required on all, uh, any owners of more than 20% of the company uh, would have to offer their personal guarantee. Um, so that is the VITA loan. So the timing of this uh, is in question because we don't yet know as to when we'll be able to deliver a state budget. Um, so th those numbers change hourly, I would say, and uh, the senator can speak to this later. But um, so we're tr really just trying to figure out what that state budget looks like for 2021. We're still trying to deal with what 2020 looks like. Um, so we're nowhere near being able to package that together and sending it to the governor at this point. Um, so it's going to be a while. Um, and, and when I say a while, I, I hate to say that it's going to be May. Uh, but it won't be earlier than May before these VITA loans. Uh, so probably about the same time that those SBA loans that uh, Darcy was describing, VITA will be available at that point in time too. So that's, that's all I have on VITA right now. It's just an update saying it, it's, it is a great program, but it's not yet available. Okay. All right, Charlie, thanks. All right, we've got one more on this section on, on non-government you know government, uh, programs, and that's Denise, well, this really cuts across all of them. Denise Duquette, who, who's one of the leaders of SCORE, and if you're confused about everything you've heard so far, SCORE and, uh, is one of the organizations that can help you and provide you with assistance to sort through everything. So Denise, do you want to uh, take over now? Sure. So thank you, everybody, for um, making the commitment to helping your business in this troubled time. We know I myself am a business owner. It, this is always a lot of fun. Um, I am the chapter co-chair of SCORE Vermont, and we service the vast majority of Vermont as well as the Clinton, Essex, and Franklin counties of New York. Uh, we have a great set of teams set up. Uh, we have one triage team currently set up to address any HR-related issues whether it's um, workers' comp, unemployment insurance, how to have those difficult conversations. That seems to be a bit of an issue these days. And we have another team set up that is much larger for dealing with cash flow. Um, as everybody pretty much here has said, there are multiple avenues to explore for a small business, whether it is the first time to forge that relationship with your banker, whether it's uh, working with the SBA, all of those require stuff. They require things from you that you have to kind of gather and get together. And we're going to help you do that. Uh, we won't sit there and fill out the application with you. That would be annoying. Be like someone watching you over your over your uh, behind your back. But we're going to make sure that you are analyzing your financials properly. We're going to help you um, reduce the panic and highly focus you so that you're only covering the things you need to cover. Um, we have a very short turnaround right now with clients. Uh, we have literally turned a request for a mentor around in less than five minutes. And um, obviously it can take longer if people don't get back to us. But we are um, doing all of our mentoring virtually. So we're using Zoom as our tool of choice. Uh, we also do offer mentoring over phone and email. Once we get past this hurdle in life, we will resume our in-phase mentoring, but we still do continue to offer all four methods of mentoring. Everything is at no cost to our 
percent uh, to our clients, which is really important. We don't need to incur any costs for anything right now. And everything is confidential, so we're not going to be telling anybody your financial position, your problems, and your woes. It stays with us. And obviously, if you need to get a mentor, you can hit scorevermont.org and hit the Find a Mentor button. All right. Terrific. Thank you. Um, thanks, Denise. And I just I, on that last point that you made about the finding the mentor. So, um, Darcy, the good news is that the SBA site is up and working. So I'm going to give you all three sites. All of these are listed on the EDC website. You go to the first link at the top of the page, and it'll take you through the to the to the page that's set up just for this call. If you scroll down at the bottom, there are a number of links in addition to the banks. There's sba.gov slash disaster where you can apply for disaster assistance. There's a big button, and that is up, Darcy, or it was two minutes ago. Um, the SCORE site uh, that Denise just mentioned, score.org uh, slash, uh, slash find member, mentor, sorry, there's a, there's a link on the here. And the SBDC, the Vermont um, Small Business Development Corp. Um, there's also a similar find a, uh, a request an advisor. So all three of those places, you can just click a button and start uh, getting getting some help. Um, let's pause now for questions about these government programs, the SBA program, the VITA program, or getting assistance from SCORE. Or if you have questions, the bankers are still, I think most of them are still on the line. Um, uh, and so if you have questions about anything that's been discussed so far, hit star six. And you'll be asked, I think, to confirm that you want to join the queue with a one. And uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure if this person, is this 6748? This might be Laura Spittle again. So I'm going to unmute you, Laura. I'm not sure if you wanted to ask a question. Uh, but if you did, you're unmuted. Go ahead. We can't hear you if you, uh, at your end, you may be muted or you may not have asked a question. Um, I've got a couple of other questions. All right, well, Laura, if you did ask a question, hit star six again. I don't think you did. But um, I'm going to call now on 779-1209. So make sure your phone is unmuted at your side, and I'm going to pick you now. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Nick, um, and I have a, I'm actually a working artist, and I'm a member of the gallery in Woodstock called Collective the Art of Craft. And there's been a lot of discussion about loans. I'm wondering, are there any resources available for grants? It sounds like there's some consideration for loan forgiveness, for payroll. Is there any other resources that you know of as far as grants? Uh, I'll just take a very quick answer to that. In Woodstock, if you are a Woodstock located business, and it sounds like you are, um, we have a, a business relief fund which is making loans, uh, 12 months, no payments, no interest, at the end of 12 months, if your business is still in a difficult situation, we will um, will forgive the loan. Um, and uh, that program is live. You can go to the EDC website. It's very small amounts. It's designed. It's already been operating for four days, and so it's designed to just get quick cash into people's hands. So it's the amount of the loan, or the, you think of it as a grant, really, is is a, is a thousand dollars. We're considering additional programs. Uh, but we haven't decided on those yet. So that's the first thing. But uh, if you're looking for more than that, it's a very small amount. And um, does anyone uh, does anyone want to want to chime in on on the on the question? Yeah, uh, this is Charlie Heineck. Um There's a there's a couple of things. One of the things that uh, Darcy mentions, Darcy from the SBA mentioned, is the potential of this economic injury grant. Uh, through the SBA, that has to be really detailed out, and that is when you're applying for an economic injury disaster loan. But um, so you might have seen some newscasts last night where they were saying, "We're going to put cash in your pocket in three days." Well, uh, it's going to take a little while to set that up, um, but that that may be a source of financing through the SBA. Um, so that's that's something to look at. Also, a, another legislator had shared with. Um, some of us, the list of resources available to artists, and I'll send that to John so he can put that on his website. I don't think it was necessarily a source of grants, but it did have a really good list of different organizations to support artists, I, and I hope that would help. Okay, great. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, thanks, Nick. Um, we've got another call from a uh, question from seven four eight fifteen eighty two. So uh, make sure your phone is muted. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, is it star six? Yeah. Hello, we can, can you hear me? No, we, we can hear you. Yeah. Yes, this is Opal Evans, Gallery on the Green. And first, thank you all very much for these meetings. They have been invaluable in trying to stay on top of some of the questions that we all have. And it, uh, it, they, they're pretty efficiently done, and we really appreciate that as well. Um, my question is that for we are in a, a unique situation. We were an employer, sole proprietors, uh, of the gallery on the green with employees until the end of this past year. And because last year was not a good year for us, we basically made a decision to not have employees. We only had one part-time employee anyway, and that we would run the gallery on our own uh, because we reduced the size of the gallery. So the question is whether or not any of these programs uh, provide some assistance to uh, sole proprietors who have no employees. It sounded like the uh, the payroll uh, program is applicable only to companies that have payroll. Darcy, do you want to respond to that? Um, sure. So sole proprietors are eligible for the EIDL loan, um, and um, they say they're eligible for the other one, but I, it, I think what would happen is you could get the loan, but you wouldn't necessarily get the forgiveness that that is about the payroll. Um, oh, but you can see. still okay. you can get money other than payroll under that loan program. It's a little murky okay. though, so we want to we want to wait for the details to come out on that. Um, but you would be eligible under the idle loan, and I, I believe the banks would also just separately be a good place to to talk with them about you know how they would look at your request. Right. We yes, we already have. Uh, that in work in the works, but we haven't yet met with our lender. So, but yes, I just wanted to have a little better understanding of, of the loan programs that may or may not be available. But thank you very much. Hey, Darcy, this is this is Steve Gurren. Uh, real quick, uh, I I did get to see a summary of that program. What was passed by the Senate, and assuming mm -hmm. it doesn't change, um, the proceeds that are eligible for the forgiveness, the uses, uh, are payroll mortgage interest, rent, and utilities. That's what was. That's what made it through the Senate. So we'll see if the House confirms that. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Yes. Thank you. I'll, I'll uh, lower my hand now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks. So it's star six. We don't have any other questions left, um, but I'll just get, wait one more minute. Star six, if you want to raise your hand, and then you'll have to hit one to, uh, to confirm. All right. I'm going to call on seven, eight, Five four. Make sure your phone is muted, and uh, go ahead. Oh, whoops. Come on. Um, just go ahead. Did did I call on someone? No, I think I missed it. Sorry. Set up one eight zero six eight zero two three five six eighteen zero six. Go ahead. Hi, this is Ben and Boris Hillsmaker from Mountain Creamery. We wanted to address a question to Charlie Kimball. We are concerned with our upcoming sewer bill, which is due tomorrow. Um, we were wondering if there's any uh, relief or forgive forgiveness concerning that. Uh, actually, Charlie, can I interrupt one second? Because Mary Riley, or maybe you can address this, but Mary Riley um, is on the call and, and, and wanted to make a comment about the sewer bill. Charlie, but I, I don't... Um, I'm going to look for Mary's number. Mary, if you could raise your hand, hit star six. Um, but Charlie, in the meantime, do you want to? Do you have anything to, to comment on that? Sure. Hi, Ben. Um, yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah we okay, thank good. You. Um, yeah. So I did uh, actually pose your question uh, to or and pass it on to the select board uh, and to know, and, and so did Allison Clarkson, and she she got some feedback also from legislative council as to whether or not the select board has the ability uh, to waive those. And there's more flexibility on the municipal level as to what they can do than there may be at a state level with other taxes and other fees. Um, so uh, I don't know if the select board has discussed that and what they're planning on doing, but that is the right 
uh, audience for that is really with the select board. So at, at least uh, part of the things that we had talked about, uh, that Boris and I had talked about, is the two things. One is the sewer bill and the other is the rooms and meals uh, taxes that we're due. And what's different from last week than this week is that um, today they, or yesterday they would have been due. Um, so at least that was deferred until some future date, which is still unknown. But um, so we got we got half of the loaf uh, in terms of the relief in that sense. Okay, and I, uh, I'm not sure if Mary's available, then she might be able to comment on that. Mary, I think you're unmuted. I'm not certain. Can you speak? I think your phone might be muted, but maybe uh, Mary, I'm going to pick you. I figured out your phone number, and I'm going to pick you next. Mary, go ahead. You're unmuted at our end anyway. Are you there? Oh, hello, Mary. We can't hear you yet. I think you're at 2183. Two, is Mary Riley? Uh, all right. Well, um, Mary, if you – are you – oh, wait a minute. You're muted. Oh, wait. Carrie Cole, it looks like Carrie is on. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna have I'm gonna call on Carrie uh, and see if we can hear her. Um, Carrie, go ahead. You're on. Hi. Um, I spoke with Mary about this yesterday because I'd been receiving lots of questions about it. And as of yesterday, or maybe it was even the day before yesterday, Frank had instructed us that we would not be able to to do anything about the sewer bill since they were sent out in January. Um, but things are changing so quickly that may be old news. <clears throat> but the select board has been discussing it, and we're meeting tomorrow at 9 a.m., a joint meeting with the village trustees, <clears throat> and I'm happy to bring it up again. Uh, okay, and I, I feel badly because Mary, um, I'm just going to give try one more time with um, with Mary to see if I can get her on to the call. Mary, if you, um, 2183 is her number. Let me see if I can unmute. 2183. There's 100 people on the call, so it's not. Okay, there's Mary. I'm going to unmute her. Uh, Mary, you're unmuted, I think. Do you have anything? Uh, can you hear us? Uh, shoot. Um, and I'm going to try. I'll pick you. You raised your hand. Mary, I think you're. You, we can hear you. I, I mean, we can't hear you, but I think you're on. Mary? All right, I'm sorry, folks. Um, it, it, let me just suggest, I'm sure that Mary is, is, uh, knows something about this issue. It may be the same as what Carrie said. So I will, after the call, Mary, if you give me a call, I will uh, tell me the information. I will post uh, that information on the EDC website, Boris, as soon as this call is over. So uh, if you want to just check, it's woodstock-vermont.com. And the first link on the website takes you to the March 26th meeting. Um, and, uh, and I will, you know, within a half an hour of when we're done, I'll, uh, if Mary calls me, I think she will, then I will uh, get that information up on the website. And uh, if you want to check back, you'll, you can see it. And then tomorrow morning, the select board, I guess, is meeting. So, uh, Mary, are you there? Last chance. I... Oh, wait a minute. She's uh, making... John. Go ahead. Is that Allison? John. It, it's Allison. Uh, I would just say this is an issue for any town that has a municipal sewer system, and my guess is that these bills will be coming up uh, in the next not too distant uh, in the not too distant. Is that Mary? So it, this is a municipal decision to make whether they abate it or not, whether they defer it or not. So uh, for all the towns that have sewer systems, this will be an issue for them to address. Right. Okay. All right, we've got a couple of other questions, and I'm gonna I'll move us along now. Uh, Two nine one zero zero four zero. Make sure your phone is unmuted, and go ahead. You're on there. Hello. Two nine one zero zero four zero. That's your number. We're waiting for you. Going once. Going twice. All right, we have one last question, which is. Um, 603-448-7854. So make sure your phone is unmuted and if you can announce yourself. Yeah, my name is uh, David Lovell from Quechee. 
And I've got a uh, commercial building on Route 4 with, that houses uh, six small businesses. And I've already told my tenants that we'd get through this. Um, so they're not, you know, uh, I'm not going to put any uh, pressure on them by paying me any rent. Down, down the road, uh, what's my best solution for when it comes tax time and whatnot to just get a small loan to go, go along to help these people? Does, does anyone want to take that question? Um, this is Darcy with SBA. I mean, um, commercial property owners, investment property owners are eligible to apply for the EIDL loan. Okay. So uh, you could take a look at that to see if it's something, you know, that would be helpful. Okay, great. Thank you. And again, I think you can also ask that general question of SCORE or of Vermont SBDC, both of which you, you can get advisors to help, you know, if there, if there are further answers to that question. So, all right, I just, uh, because we want to finish at 7, there's one more question, and then we're going to turn to the, the sort of the ending updates from the legislatures and a few others. So, uh, 3690069. Oh, we've got another question, a couple more. So, I want to try to answer as many questions as we can. So, 3690069. Um, just tell, say who you are and make sure you're unmuted. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, FX Flynn in uh, Quichi. Um, so I provide uh, uh, IT consulting service. Uh-oh. Uh, I think he was just cut off. Are, are we still on? Can anyone hear? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. All right, so we're still here. Um, I think FX just sadly got cut off. Yeah, I think he got cut off. If you can hear us, if you can dial back in, because um, you're unmuted at our end. Oh, I've got one more question, 802-281-9484. So please announce yourself and make sure your phone is unmuted. Go ahead. Hi, yes, this is Sam Unitali from um, Moan Bear Cafe. Um, my question is, can you hear me? We can, Sam. Go ahead. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, my question is uh, directed towards Allison um, or Charlie regarding uh, rent uh, for us re uh, businesses renting our, um, where we have our businesses, whether or not the state is going to have any kind of mandate that landlords have to either reduce or pause rent during this time, um, just in case landlords are not willing to work with businesses um, uh, during this time and are expecting them to still pay full rent during um, the shutdown. Uh, may I start with this, Charlie? Uh, this is a, a big issue that we are addressing in Senate Economic Development. Uh, we had a meeting today, a four-hour meeting today, and began with uh, uh, landlord-tenant issues. Um, it is clear that the, we have residential and commercial rent issues. The, we're, we're, we're just beginning work on this. As you know, the judiciary has stayed evictions. Uh, they're not being taken up. Uh, it's not a priority for the courts. It is up to each individual judge how they deal with it. They are, uh, people are looking to the legislature to make actually a decision uh, count for all counties on, on evictions not being taken up. That being said, our recommendations from all areas are that uh, the tenants, uh, restaurants in particular, because restaurants do a lot more renting than other businesses, but lots of businesses rent, uh, begin obviously working with their landlord. Their, uh, the landlords, you know, the landlords have costs too, which is, uh, we are reminded, but we had the president of the Landlord Association on with us today. Um, we're working, the House has a bill there that they, and we're, they're sharing language with us and we're looking at that. So more to follow, but we're very clear that this is an issue. Uh, but begin with your landlords, and if landlords aren't being cooperative and understanding, um, then that's an issue that we'll have to, you know, we'll, we'll be looking at. 
Okay, yeah. Sam, I'd, uh, I'd like to get more information on that as a, you know, I know um, I know a few people that that is potentially the case, and um, I think it's really important. I think it's it might it might get to a state level where people are going to need the state to come in and be like, no, you cannot, you know, push out your right. business well, because they can't pay right. their, like, you can't do this. Because it, we, not we, we, all landlords are willing to work with their tenants. Right, and we understand that, and uh, we're meeting again on Tuesday morning. So, I mean, this is an issue that we understand is is, is pressing, and we're going to need to act on it soon. I, I really appreciate all your hard work. Thank you all so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Sam. Charlie, did you want to add something? Well, just that I can relate having a retail store and no business uh, right. and having a rent payment that I have to make every month. Uh, so uh, I don't want to seem trite when I say I feel your pain, but I feel your pain, um, mm -hmm. Sam. So, but, you know, it's an interesting relationship between government and private ownership as to what we can dictate and, and then what we can do for assistance. So sometimes it's assistance to the small businesses uh, certainly the more understanding of landlords will try to work with their tenants as much as they can uh, because, mm -hmm. as Allison said, they do have expenses on the other side. So anyway, so it's it's delicate, but the first conversation is with that landlord, absolutely. Of course. And the, other, course. Thing, the okay. other thing I would add, John Spector, do you want to add about what the Woodstock um, Economic Development Commission just <clears throat> because you're doing something particular on this. Yeah, and actually, we, right, I was going to mention that very briefly. The, the, um, we, uh, are, uh, we announced a rent relief initiative, which is very over grandiosely named because we have no influence uh, over landlords, but we offered the possibility of uh, writing letters, uh, you know, uh, from the EDC to landlords that, um, that uh, you know, my, that where you might not uh, be able to reach any accommodation. I don't know what, if any, effect it will have. I definitely think that the first line, that the last line of defense, not the first line, but we're talking to the chamber. I actually think that the chamber is more well-suited and might be more effective at writing these. The chamber is trying to figure out that, and they had a, so I don't know if Beth, if, when Beth comes on in a moment, she may be able to update us. If she doesn't, will resolve this between the chamber and the EDC within the next 24 hours, and, and one of us will take the lead. I think both Beth and I would like the chamber to do it, but, but she, we, we have to make sure that that's, you know, that that's appropriate and feasible. If it is, I think it would be effective. So if you're interested in that, Sam, you, know, you can contact one of us right now on the EDC website. There is a form to fill out if you are interested in that. And if you send it in, it'll go to the EDC, and we'll transfer all of that over to the chamber if they decide to take the lead on this. If not, we'll do it. If it's really up to the chamber. Um, all right. We, I see no more questions, and it's 6.40, and we want to end by 7. So um, let's just turn to the last section of this, which is some updates, uh, first from uh, Allison and then from Charlie from the legislature, if they have anything to add. Then quickly an update from Beth Finlayson, who is the head of the Woodstock Chamber, and then finally very quickly from uh, from me, and then we'll end the call. So, Allison, do you have anything you want to add? Well, uh, well, Char Charlie and I both have been involved. The Senate and the House have passed three big pieces of legislation, which are designed to provide relief uh, uh, for uh, in this COVID crisis. So we have done uh, it. Have been passed both by the Senate and uh, by the House an expansion of uh, unemployment insurance benefits and experience rate, re rating relief for temporarily laid off employees and those who have quit for good cause. So big Q UI expansion. The trust fund is very healthy. Uh, and so this, uh, I can go into detail on that, but um, we've done that. We did a big healthcare uh, bill, which also expands uh, opportunities and makes more flexible the health care system. Uh, it allows uh, the state and government to deal with uh, the crisis by expanding capabilities in our health care system and respond to needs. So it's everything in flexibility and licensing and using um, retired doctors, telehealth, extension of prescriptions, stuff like that. So we've done a lot of that. And then we, the third big piece was on elections and open meeting laws, which I dedicated my vote to John Spector. And it uh, which is uh, enables us to uh, meet and provide and, and meet 
uh, remotely and take votes remotely, in, uh, both in our committees and municipal and in any any uh, meeting that falls under the open meeting law. Uh, it, we it created much more flexibility around that. Uh, Charlie, do you want to add anything to those three big pieces of legislation? We're happy to provide more detail. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm just looking at a five-page printout of one of them, so no, uh, yeah. Yeah, happy to answer more details. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've got lots of – lot, and I can go back into that, but just to give you a notion, we're, uh, the Senate Economic Development Committee, uh, and Charlie is on the mirror committee in the House, we, are, uh, we met today for four hours, worked primarily on rent on rent and uh, landlord-tenant issues, on taking, so we heard from the judiciary from landlord-tenants, and this is a big issue as Sam DiNatale identified. Uh, we are taking time to understand the federal action with the CARES Act, especially as it impacts UI, unemployment insurance, and the self-employed independent contractors, nonprofits, and municipalities. Uh, we also uh, are looking at the tax decisions and those impacts on businesses and uh, the uh, Agency of Commerce and Community Development, uh, their essential business list, which people I'm sure have questions about, but mostly need to be directed to the Agency of Commerce and Community Development. The joint rule, we are meeting twice a day. We have an all-Senate call every morning and a joint rules call where we hear from specific uh, uh, state leadership, and yesterday we heard from the Secretary of the Agency of Commerce and Community Development. She did a great job trying to interpret and help us understand how they created this critical list. But we, the critical list of, of, of businesses, the businesses deemed critical, is I've given that link to John. It's on that website that John has referred to. Um, the agency is open to people uh, asking for an exemption. Uh, they're, it, they're overwhelmed, so it, will take, it may take a day or two for them to get back to you. Um, they have a, a whole list of, of frequently asked questions and answers so that you can read through that. Um, but it is they're working as hard as they can to both address your exemption needs and both to, really they want us to understand that this is designed to uh, limit the amount of business that's done person to person. And uh, so loggers and lots of people who are working outdoors uh, and in outdoor recreation businesses may be less affected uh, than they may think, but it's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of information is on the Agency of Commerce and Community Development website, and I urge you to go to that first, and it will lead you to most of what you need. Um, but I'm happy to go in. I know the hour is late. Happy to go into greater detail on almost anything, as is Charlie, I am sure. Charlie, you want to add anything now? Okay? I'll just be real quick. Um, the easiest way to get to that list and anything else is to go to healthvermont.gov, healthvermont, all one word, .gov. And then there is a banner about, you know, right near the top of the page, there's COVID-19, and then under there, there are frequently asked questions. So it's uh, for businesses as well, and then it'll go to the essential uh, businesses. I'm sorry, critical businesses. And just to stress how fluid this is, you know, last week at this time, we were talking about uh, meals and rooms tax and sales tax, uh, and decision was made to defer those. Uh, we were also talking about at that point what an essential worker was. Now we're talking about critical businesses. Uh, right. Then we had barber shops and hair salons closed, and now all every public facing business is closed. So it's still incredibly fluid. I just got an announcement, I'm sure Allison did too, that the governor's announced that schools will be closed through the remainder of the year. Um, so they're not going to be opening in April like originally scheduled. Um, so this is going to continue, but uh, hopefully we will get some more information on that federal package and it'll it'll come to us sooner rather than later. So that will be a great thing to have. So that's all I wanted to add is that this is still very real and still very surreal um, as we go forward. Okay, yeah. thanks. Um, sorry, go ahead. Who is that? Um, is it Allison? No, okay. I'm, I'm, I... You're fine. Oh, the one thing I, the one thing I would add is uh, it has not been well marketed but they have reopened enrollment for the for Vermont Health Connect because a number of people have lost 
not only their income, but they have lost their uh, health care benefits. And uh, so the navigators are uh, available, but oh, there is now an open enrollment period for Vermont Health Connect, and I, I believe it's for the next couple, next two weeks. Um, so if you've lost your health care benefits or your employees have lost their health care benefits, uh, please uh, enroll them in uh, Vermont Health Connect. Uh, also, I'd just like to remind us that the that Windsor County, next to Chittenden County, has the largest number of corona cases, coronavirus cases. So I would urge us all to, you know, um, with this critical business issue, I know people are frustrated. We're all frustrated. As the secretary said last night on, on, on our call, she said, you know, this is not what I am supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be encouraging the growth of business, not shutting them down. She said it is painful to, be, to have to do the exact opposite of what I've been hired to do. And I think that's, you know, I think we all feel that. Uh, just to give you a notion of the Department of Labor last week, they uh, had a record set. Uh, they had 3,667 UI claims were processed, but they had 14,000 claims. For Vermont, that is just huge. I know you've been reading about the numbers in other states, but this is just huge for Vermont. And um, the, the plus is that o over a billion two has been, is from what we can initially see, Vermont will benefit uh, over a billion two dollars will be coming to Vermont in various ways. We had a very good update from Chris Saunders in the Leahy office, in Leahy's office, and uh, you know we are going to get a lot of support for for everything from self-employed to sole proprietors to to uh, business to all businesses. So. You know, help is on the way. We have to distill it. We have to figure out what we have to do to act to enable it. Uh, but we're working on it, and uh, we're rowing with you. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Um, uh, Beth, and listen, I'm going to call on you in one second. Carrie Cole, I see you have your hand raised, and we're going to come back to you. Maybe you've got an update on the sewer situation, but we're going to come back to you after Beth and I are done. It'll just be a few minutes. Beth uh, Finlayson is the head of the Woodstock Chamber. Thank you, Beth, by the way, for helping to invite and, and promote, you know, make give people the information about this call. Um, do you have anything you want to add? I, um, I just have two things. I'll be very quick. Um, the first is that we recently today sent out an email to area businesses asking for their availability of hours. So if they're doing takeout, if they're doing um, business online so that we can keep, and this is for all businesses, we're not just for chamber members, um, so that we can keep an updated list of um, how to help your business at all um, because that's what we're here for. Um, and the second thing is, is that we're distilling so much information like all of this and all of you um, and getting it on the Woodstock VT website under the COVID-19. Um, so if you, and if you have anything that you would like sent out, um, you can, our office is closed, unfortunately, but we're available um, via email and telephone. So um, if you want us to answer some questions, please just reach out. And that's it. And Beth, your contact information is on the uh, EDC page for this uh, for this call. Um, and Beth, just the other the other thing, John, the other thing I wanted to say is that um, I'm going to reach out to my board tomorrow or later on tonight after this call to talk about the the letter to landlords. Okay, so yeah, that we might be able to get started with that tomorrow. Okay, that would be great. Thanks, and you and I can co we can coordinate that offline. But I appreciate that. And, you know, we we okay. I think it's best from the chamber. It'd be most effective from you guys. But we'll do it if you can't for some reason. Okay, no, I think that's fine. All right. Um, just uh, very briefly, um, from the EDC perspective, uh, just two thing, two quick things, and then Carrie, I'll give you a chance. Um, first is our business relief fund that I mentioned earlier. It is still open. We started it on Monday. Uh, the turnaround time is two days. Uh, it's a, a technically a loan of up to $1,000. If you are a local business in Woodstock, I think we've had about 20 or 25 people apply. We've granted most of those. Uh, the loan is, there's no payments for 12 months of interest or principal. There's no interest ever. 
there's no pr principal repayments for a year. If at the end of the year you can demonstrate that you really have a hardship and can't repay it, we will forgive the loan. Um, uh, so, and that's available on the, on our website, Woodstock-Vermont, spelled out, Woodstock-Vermont.com. Um, the second is uh, something that I want to, if you all could please uh, be alert to, we're, we're going to launch uh, a small survey of local businesses in the next few days, and we will post it on the listserv, on the Vermont Standard website, and on the Woodstock discussion forum, the online distribution channels, and, and also, of course, through the Chamber and the Chamber's website. Um, we want to know what we, we are struggling beyond the business relief fund, we're struggling what to do next. Uh, we have resources, we want to support the local business community, we don't have enough resources to do all of the ideas that have been generated and so we want input from local business owners as to what would be most helpful to fill in the gaps between the various programs that you've heard tonight. We also want to understand from all of you how you would advise that we balance the need that you have immediately versus the needs that we're probably going to have when when business starts up again. Um, and you know we we aren't expecting any you know our tax our tax revenue has disappeared the same as everyone else's, and so uh, we are not expecting additional funding for some period of time. So we're trying to figure out the, how to balance between emergency needs and short-term needs and needs over the next 12 or 18 months once and then funding you know our tax funding will will then start to build up again so please look out on announcement for that survey to give us some some help in trying to figure out what you all think is most important um, that's all i have from the edc carrie uh, you've had your hand raised so i'll give you a call now and then uh, i think we're we're reaching our our end but uh carrie make sure you're unmuted you're you're on i think hi yes so Mary got booted off. She's sorry, um, uh, but we've been texting, and the town is in the same situation that everyone is. <laughs> so the town has four hundred thousand dollars outstanding with three months left in the fiscal year, and so we're trying to balance everything. The current recommendation coming from Frank is that people pay what they can in terms it, on the sewer bill, and then we hope to be better able to work with penalty and interest once we determine uh, what what the remainder is that's outstanding. Okay, thank you. That's really helpful. And it's great to have people, you know, participating real time on the call. So Mary, sorry <laughs> if we couldn't get you on, but thank you for passing that info to Carrie. Okay, um, it's 6.54. We'll give you back six minutes. Um, I want to really thank, we have a fantastic group of speakers tonight, um, just as we've had for the last two calls. Um, I know you all, uh, no one has free time these days. You're all working really hard doing what you all do uh, to help the community and to help your businesses. So thank you um, to Bill Dunn, Jody Cole, Steve Gurren from the banks, Darcy Carter from the SBA, Charlie and Allison uh, for their work in the legislator, Denise Duquette from SCORE, uh, and Beth Finlayson from the chamber. Thank you all for taking the time. And uh, we don't have another call scheduled, but the situation is fluid. Uh, we're happy to continue these calls. We won't schedule them until we know that we have an agenda that seems to make sense. Um, and uh, until then, I hope everyone can uh, can stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, John. Hold on. Take care. Oh, John. Thank you. Bye now. Yeah. Bye -bye. John. Yeah. Yes. John, go ahead, can Alison. On one, can you hold on one sec? Sure. Uh, I mean, can we actually have a conversation? Well, we can, Here, but uh, I, for our next public. For our there, are, next call. there are still lots of people oh, yeah. online, so but I'm happy to talk now. Oh, if okay. You know. So this is uh, just a suggestion for our next call. Um, yeah. I would suggest we, we get somebody from either Leahy's office, Welch's office, or, well, yeah, Leahy's office uh, probably, because um, they've been dealing with this longer. Uh, for next call, it would be great to just talk about some of the federal uh, opportunities that are, are coming our way and a whole range of things. Great. I, mean, I, I think it would be great. Chris Saunders was great today in our economic development meeting. Who is he? What the chief of staff or? Uh, no, he's um, he's he's one of the 
key people in Leahy's office. I can't remember what his title is. But okay. who, somebody from Leahy's office, um, he, he tends to do most of the stuff for that's Vermont Direct. Okay. I mean, I mean, obviously, you you um you would be you know the you and Charlie would be the best people to to coordinate that since yeah. I yeah right no I'm just I'm just putting that marker yeah, out no, there a, he was terrific it's a great idea I think what we will do if it's okay is let's wait a couple of days see what other agenda items kind of come up and then say on Monday we'll pick a call you know I'm guessing the end of next week there'll be things that have developed and uh, if that yeah. would be appropriate is that timing yep. seem reasonable. Yep, I think that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Fantastic. And Thanks. this is a, this is a this is a good time. Thursdays at five thirty. I think it's you know I think Friday at five thirty is a little bit. Not that everyone's rushing out to do weekend things on Friday nights, but still, it's Friday night. Well, it seems to be we're getting or consistently getting you know a hundred or hundred ten people on the call. So, by that's by great. the way, one last personal thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for of all of you for passing the change to the open meeting law. Maybe I'm the only one yeah. tearing my hair out. I, I really did. I, I, I thought about you as I said yes. <laughs> Good. Thank you. That's the but most anyway, involved I've ever been in politics. Yeah. Oh, God. Anyway, well, thanks a million. It's really terrific to convene these calls. I, I, I You know, other other places around the state are imitating us. So that's, you know, right. imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. Well, that's good. That's what, okay. Great. That's good. Thanks, everybody. Thanks Take a million. Care. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yep.